going on you guys it's Becca Switzer with Roof Sales Mastery author of Diamonds in the Sky and today we're going to talk a little bit about homeowner involvement in insurance claims so a lot of you guys when you're dealing with the supplementing process and the adjuster negotiations and you're getting certain things denied or you're getting certain things you know being stonewalled or having pushback and stuff like that from the adjusters one thing I like to remind contractors is this the insurance company doesn't owe you anything Right? Like you're not the one that they have a policy with, aka a contract. That's the homeowner. You're the policyholder. So sometimes when you get pushed back on certain line items, it really kind of comes down to either talking about policy, which as a contractor you cannot do. Okay, we cannot get accused of acting as a PA without a license, right? But if you don't have more leverage, it just becomes you know, a back and forth argument where you're trying to get the adjuster to say yes, they're just giving you a bunch of BS about why they're not going to pay for it, or they stonewall you, or they don't respond at all, or whatever the case may be. So something I want you guys to think about and to remember in these instances is your greatest strength, like one of your greatest plays and moves at that juncture is leveraging the homeowner. They're the policyholder. So when you're asking State Farm for XYZ, State, Jake from State Farm really doesn't give a shit. But when the homeowner starts asking about it and starts making these valid points, they sing a different tune. So something that I want you guys to be really focusing on is making sure your customers understand from the get-go that that might be something that comes into play throughout their insurance claim process. And just help them understand it like this. You don't want to make it sound like the insurance company is just the big bad wolf and they're always going to get screwed by them and, you know, if... You don't want to play it too much like that because it makes you sound kind of suspicious, but you want to say, look, sometimes these claims go really, really well. You know, all insurance companies are different. We've got insurance companies that really take care of their customers and we just don't really have any problems. And then we have other insurance carriers who are, end up being really difficult. And I don't want to freak you out, Mrs. Jones, or anything like that, but what I always remind people is insurance companies are businesses and businesses are in business to do what? Make money. So how they make money is they collect a ton in annual premiums and they pay out as little as possible in claims. And not saying that your insurance company is necessarily out to screw you on purpose, okay? That's, that's not the case necessarily, but you have to look at it like this. If the insurance company has, let's say your insurance company has 100,000 claims this year, okay, in their market, and they can find a way to just save, let's say a thousand bucks on each claim, well, let's do the math. Take that times 100,000 claims, that's a hundred million dollars. That's a huge freaking number. Okay, cut that even in half. Let's say they shave off 500 bucks on every claim, which is extremely negligible. It's like almost nothing. They're saving 50 million dollars for the year. I mean, that's, you know, the CEO's private jet, brand new, okay? So because of that, sometimes we have a little bit of trouble with certain line items, like they'll give you flack about certain things. I want you to understand that from the get-go, I'm going to be very transparent about any line items that we're asking for, materials, labor, code items, stuff like that. And I'm going to be showing you my, my estimate line by line. And if there's anything that, you know, your insurance adjuster leaves off your estimate, I'm going to come in, show you exactly what it is, make sure you understand why we're asking for it, and then go to the insurance company to get that covered and approved for you. Because they owe it to you, right? We're not going to put on your roof and leave off four line items. Like that doesn't make sense, right? Now, in this process, occasionally, sometimes the homeowner has to do a little bit of the work with that. And the reason is, the insurance company de technically doesn't owe me anything, right? They owe you as the customer. So there may be an instance where you may have to send in a written correspondence, which I'm actually gonna take care of for you and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. But if there's something they give us pushback on or they're giving us a difficult time about for whatever reason, I'm going to make sure I educate you fully on what it is we're asking for and why. And then I'll show you the next steps so that we can make sure that you get indemnified properly by your insurance company for the stuff they actually owe you. Does that sound cool? And everybody's like, of course. <laughs> I need to turn off my space heater because I'm roasting to death. Hold on. <sighs> okay. So you warm up your homeowner like that ahead of time. Then later in the process when it comes up, they're not surprised by it, they're not shocked by it or blindsided by it, okay? 
Now, when that process comes into play, there are a lot of tools that can really, really help you with this. We don't want to just make the homeowner suddenly responsible and like assume that they know exactly what they're supposed to say and how they're supposed to handle it. We need to prepare them 100% for this interaction with the insurance company. And here's what I've done. And I'm going to flip over here to my advanced sales and supplement training program. For those of you who are not in it, this is just one of the lessons in here. So I have a whole section called homeowner involvement in claims negotiations. And there's a bunch of different letters that I've made. I, I just call these the homeowner's letters. So for example, I'll just kind of look at a couple of these, but homeowner's request for strictly written correspondence. Um, this is a great one. Like when you're having a hard time having the insurance company, like actually speak <laughs> with you in writing, like we want everything in writing because if the insurance company starts to spout off a bunch of BS, it's just not true. We have written record for it. If we do have to take it to appraisal or court or department of insurance or insurance commissioner or anything like that letter from the homeowner for ocean fall protection case, this is written a written template for the homeowner asking for that appraisal demand letter avoid. So here's just a lesson I have about avoiding as a uh, acting as a PA without a license. Cause that's important for you guys. Letter from homeowner for additional siding elevations. This one's great. Letter from homeowner for matching siding. Wind repair. Requesting in writing grounds on which coverage is denied. So that's a really good one. So when something's getting denied and the homeowner's like, can you put in writing to me why exactly this line item is getting denied on my claim? Because a lot of the time, insurance companies will say things like, well, it's just our policy not to pay for that. And that's just a BS objection, but most people just stop there. Um, if you ask them for in writing to put that, half the time they won't. And that's what gets them to pay for it because they know they're being called on their BS. And again, they know that if there's a written record of the things that they're saying and claiming about this insurance claim process, they know that they can get in trouble for that. Like we can bring that to the DOI, we can bring that to the insurance commissioner. So then there's some different appraisal demands, um, instructions, uh, full roof replacement, intent to switch insurance carriers. This is another good one too. And I do have some other lessons um, in different sections here. Like you can kind of see um, these are different. So mastering this part of the business, like this angle is going to be really important for you guys. Um, I get a lot of emails from people or coaching calls with people that are like, well, we're getting stonewalled and we just don't know how to get past these certain objections. We're getting really frustrated. And especially if you're dealing with somebody like, State Farm or Allstate, like kind of the ones that are nefarious for denying things and being difficult and stuff like that, your homeowner involvement is going to be absolutely critical. So remember to summarize here and all of these lessons, by the way, if you haven't enrolled in this course, I really encourage you to do so. I've put so much of my blood, sweat and tears in it to make sure that you guys are fully armed and have every angle possible to handle these insurance claims. But in there, I have every step of the way, like first point of contact, the salesperson during the sales presentation, we're kind of planting seeds about this supplement process and what that might look like. Then later when the insurance paperwork is coming and we're preparing them for like, hey, by the way, this is what my Xactimate looks like. See, we're using the same, it says Xactimate, it says Xactimate, we're using the same pricing software here. This line item is the same price as this line item because we're using the exact same thing. Why is my price different? Well, let's take a look huh, okay, they didn't have rigid and starter, okay, they don't have OMP, they didn't pay for a generator, they didn't pay for fall protection, they didn't pay for that, blah, blah, blah. And as you're going through that process, your homeowner's like, what the hell? Why isn't my insurance company paying for all this stuff? And you're explaining each line item, like, by the way, Mrs. Jones, what that this line item is, why I have it on here, is this is part of your home, blah, 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 or here's, the, you know, the IRC building code, it says we have to put this on your roof, I'm, I'm not going to not put it on there, but we need to get your insurance company to pay for it, and this is just a classic example of them, you know, trying to nickel and dime and see if we don't notice and stuff like that. So you go through these steps in the process. And then, of course, you log into the program and you can use any of those tools that you need. And there's more that way, 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 way more than what I just showed you. That's just one little page that I have in there. But use those tools and I promise you're going to get a lot more progress. You're going to get a lot more things approved more easily and with less frustration because I know what it's like when you're getting stonewalled by the insurance company. It sucks. It's annoying. It makes your blood boil. So as always, subscribe to my YouTube channel here. You guys can check out RoofSalesMastery.com for my content and my programs. Um, I really encourage you guys to check out the courses. Like 
they work. I've been making these since 2014. I have thousands of contractors who are in it and they have raving results and testimonials that um, this stuff has absolutely changed the game for them. So I would love for you to be on board if you're not already. Guys, thanks so much for listening today. I will catch you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye.